when walked to work, all swig-faced. Six months since you clowned it up, and old friends cross the street, and no one pays you any heed except the dung-breathed men, who often now will pick you up. It's a niche business. We specialise in uh, providing thick people for jobs that they're particularly good at. Um, arguments. Thick people are very good at winning arguments because they're too thick to realise that they've lost. Um, come to pick up a black lexicon. Right. Rowena's uh, particularly thick. She's one of our top earners. She's very good with officials. She fails to grasp anything, least of all that she's being thick. So it's not your car then, then? No, I'm picking it up for Mr Hunter. I'm not Mr Hunter. OK. Fill that form in for me. And that'll be £165, please. It's worth more than that. It's worth about £12,000. No, £165 is the fine you have to pay. <sighs> Don't see why I should pay £165 when Mr Hunter's already paid £12,000. No, you're not... Look, I know Mr Hunter owns the car, but it was parked in a restricted area. Right. Do you know what a restricted area is? No. Well, it's an area where there are parking meters, right? Do you know what parking meters are? Yes, I know what a parking meters are. Right, and your Mr Hunter's parking meter was over time. He hasn't got a parking meter. The one he was at. He was at a meeting. Well, his car was at a parking meter and he didn't put enough money in it, right? He puts his money in the car. Well, he should have put it in the parking meter. You put money in the parking... No, he puts it in the tray. No, I'm saying he didn't put enough money in the parking meter. And I just said he puts his money in the car. I'm not talking about the car. I'm talking about the parking meter, all right? What? Because he didn't put enough money in the parking meter. It's not a parking meter, it's a car. I know, it's a fucking car, you stupid woman. For Christ's sake. All right, madam, you can take the car. Off you go, it's yours. I, I can take the car? Yes. Ooh. Thank you very much. Right. You didn't have to shout at me like that. Yeah, could you leave, please? Do you do car washes at all? Go away. Just it's got quite dusty.
He'd been standing there for a good ten minutes, just staring straight ahead of him. And suddenly he swung his leg over the parapet and uh, dropped off. He hit the ground very hard, lay there stunned for a second and then dragged himself to his feet and went back inside. At 30 seconds he reappeared again, hurled himself off head first, landed on his chin. Got up again, staggered about, went inside, came out again onto the balcony, dived off, and did it again and again. Again, he just kept on going. I couldn't hear anything, although the window was open, until I suppose the wind must have changed, and it was possible to tell that he was sobbing in quite a wretched way. And after about 20 jumps, there must have been 15 people just standing around staring at him in a semicircle. Nobody was raising a finger. It didn't seem appropriate, really. He seemed locked into a very private act. Towards the end, they had to help him inside because he really was quite badly broken up. I don't think he could have made it up the stairs by himself. And after about 40 jumps, he just didn't get up anymore. Apparently somebody asked him what he was doing and he, he said he wanted to jump 40 times off a first floor balcony rather than straight off the top of a tall building in case he decided to change his mind at any point. And clearly he didn't. Very recently my landlord doubled the rent here and I've spoken to the council, they said there's nothing I can do about it. So, um, I've decided to, to lower the value of this place to get my landlord where it hurts. And um, I, vandalising it would have been too obvious, so I've um, been lowering the value of property throughout Kilburn, generally. I've spread it grease around. Um, I go to breakers' yards and drain the car sumps and boil that up with water, make a sump oil mayonnaise and then smear it around all over the place at night. Um, and I've heard, I've heard someone say, nice houses in Kilburn, but it's a bit greasy. Um, it's pretty easy to break into um, hospital bins and steal bags full of used dressings. And it makes it an area read rather badly if, you, if it's covered in pussy rags, very demoralising. Probably the best thing I've done is um, I've got a sausage griddle outside um, the tube station and I fry turds on it. I think it must be working because I've been threatened with a eviction. And Either way, I would win because either the houses drop in value or I move out of the area anyway. So I can't lose. Man's come to fix the telly, love. About bloody time, it's a bloody mess. Don't need a replacement, will it? No. No? No, it seems to be set up properly. Yeah, but what about the lizards? That's a, that's a good picture. I'm not having a TV pouring lizard into my house. You see, they're uh, not really anything to do with me, Strictly. Yes, they are. It's a brand new television. It's not supposed to have lizards in it. Hmm. You see, it doesn't say anything about lizards.
lizards. Of course it bloody doesn't. They're not meant to be there, are they? Have you checked with the cable company, sir? Well, it's nothing to do with them. Have you checked with the cable company? No, we haven't. Well, all I can say is that I do suggest you, you, you check with them and, and maybe they'll be able to help you. Are you trying to tell me the cable company's sending us lizards? Maybe, yes. What? Down the wire. Went by mistake. Down, down the wire, the, the, the lizards. Now, hang on. Look, mate, look. Look, it's quite simple. Right? You sold us the telly. You delivered it yesterday. You set it up. And the first time we start using it, it starts pouring lizards. So we want you to come up with a solution, right? Sweep them up. Sweep them up? Yes. Well, you sweep them up, then. No, you sweep them up. What? Well, as, as I say, madam, they're, they're not really anything to do with me. Oh, God, is that all you can say? It's nothing to do with me, is that it? Wipers. What? Wipe them off the screen with windscreen Look, this wipers. this is fucking ridiculous, There's right? No, you no need to swear. I can fucking swear in my own house if I want to. No need for that. Right, what will your head office say when I tell him about all this, eh? Yeah. You did it. What was that? They'd say, they'd say you did it. You what? Why, why, why'd you fill your telly with lizards? Look, I've told you the lizards started coming out of that telly as soon as you'd set it up, right? You, you filled your telly with lizards. Right. I'm going to get you fucking sacked, mate. What's your name? It's Mr. Lizard. Stop fucking me about! Fucking nincompoop. Come on, what is it? Mr. Lizard. Right, what's your boss's name? Another Mr. Lizard. Stop it! Fucking stop it! <laughs> Mr. Lizard. <laughs> stop it! Where are you going? Yeah. Get back there and fix that television! Where are you going? <laughs> Get back in there and fix that television! I can't do it, you don't leave me! I can't leave me to that lizard! You got me here! Come on, you darling! I don't even want to get fixed! Come on! It's not that much to say! Come on, come on! 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 If I give you 12%, I have to do that for everyone. Mm. It's just that I've put in a lot of extra time, you know. Weekends and, and evenings, like every week for the past four months. But what if I give you 5%? And I'll get Louise in here, and you can watch me wrestle her to the ground and sit on her head. And? And then fart on it. What? You, you fart on Louise's head? Yes. <laughs> it's the best I can offer you. You know how to do it. Oh, oh hiya. Keep still, oh. break your neck. I can't breathe. Hang on, keep still. Oh. 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 Sorry, I'll explain. What are you doing? Can you just go? Please, I will explain. Sorry.
it. If you don't give me the money, I'll shoot you. Next, please. I mean it. Right. and said they'd found her eating a dead bird. All feathers in her mouth. We got a phone call one day saying she'd wandered into a police station with her pockets full of heroin. The competition to get into the best schools in this area is pretty intense and you have to use whatever methods you can. <laughs> and to be certain that Alex gets in, we're having to ensure that a lot of the opposition don't. Just a bit worried about a little boy who lives in Furl Street. Andrew Pierce. Well, we saw him incinerating a live crow. Could have been a squirrel, it was a bit charred. I do have some pictures, actually. My husband has a lens. I think I've seen him driving a car as well. He's three. It's often best to go directly for the kids. Getting them drunk's pretty effective. Uh, hello, Marina. Hello, darling. Um, I brought Marcus home. Marcus? Yeah, I, I found him out on the green. I think, he's, I think he's drunk. It's Marcus. He's drunk. Yeah, he had three or four empty beer cans. He stinks of beer. Yeah, and oh, he had uh, he had this with him as well. Uh, there's a couple of smoke lights in there. Right. Well, uh, if there's uh, anything I can do. Uh, yes, thanks, Tim. Uh, you don't mind, but just give thanks me very much. much. It would be better if we didn't have to do this, but it's not our fault that, that there aren't enough places to go around. Mm. These work. No, yeah, puts a serious blot on a child's reputation. What to say? More porn now. More porn now. I reckon we've um, eliminated about 20 kids so far, and uh, um, we're mopping up the rest by making them obsessed with pornography. I want porn. I think we pretty much guaranteed uh, Alex a place where we cut off his little finger. If I don't give him a place now, I'll be fucking living. Sorry, there's no easy way to say this, but your condition really is very serious. You won't have realised this at the moment, but you're in a coma. Coma? Yes. I first diagnosed symptomless coma three years ago, and since then, the number of cases has been steadily increasing. I have got a headache. Very characteristic of the early stages. Obviously, parents in particular have a lot of difficulty coming to terms with symptomless coma. I think I'd like to get out, Mum. You want one? I think get out, Mum. He's asking us to leave him alone. They get very tired. Why does he want to get out? No, he wants us to go, Mr. Casper. Dad? Well, yes, son. Um, I think we'd better go before he gets upset. Well, couldn't we just... I'm afraid he's likely to become a fool to himself, Mr. Fassman. Well, my best go. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. See you soon. Oh.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, nurse, uh, could you double the benzodiazepine, please? Uh. To watch a patient in a state of unavoidable decline runs against every instinct I have. When the dreadful day comes, I try and make things as easy as possible for the family. Even then, their hopes can be very unrealistic. Oh, did he feel that? No, he didn't. I'm afraid it was just a reaction. But he moved. I'm sure he felt something, didn't he? If he felt anything, I'm afraid it would only have been excruciating pain. Sadly, there's no likelihood of a cure in the foreseeable future. I hope that one day there will be a cure. But until that day, in a coma, many more young people are going to die. And I'll have to do this job again and again and again. fiber in there from last week as well. Thank you very much. Rosa, can I ask you something? Yes. Y you know we think you do a very good job. Thank you. I was just wondering if it would be easier with a, um, another Hoover. Another one? Yeah, it's just the one you use is um, very small. Yes, very small. Very good. It takes you two days. Hoovering carpets with this tiny little machine. Yes, yes, very good for dust. The dust? Dust is very small. Yeah, it, it, dust is very small. A big hoover is very big. It's too big for small dust. Dust is small. I, I just think it would be better with um, a, a bigger hoover, Rosa. You don't like my work? No, it's, it's very good, but with a normal sized hoover, you, you'd be finished in half the time. There is something wrong with my small? No, it's just I, I can't work with, with, with this you know, with that noise in the house for two days a week. It drives me mad. Well, I don't know. We'll pay you the same. I don't know. Rosa. Rosa, what's, what's the matter? Please, I must use my little Hoover. It's very good. Look, look, or if, if you want to, then yes, but only if you can get the job done in one day. Three days. Three days. I must have three days for to do a proper job. Three days. It's not possible two days no more. Rosa. I've got 20 of these. What, what are these? Brushes for the small mess. Please, don't be cross. I do my best. Please, I like it here very much. I work hard. Please, it is no problem for me three days. I know, I know. Please, Mr. Paul, I do very good with the dust. Right. Every little bloody dirt. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's all right. I go now. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, pulses. Oh, no, hi. No, fine. Bye. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, no, 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 she, she's, um, she's, she's actually going to do three days now. I know, I know, I know. I, I got, you know, she, she has about 20.
Hello? it hard to start conversations with people. I just imagine they'll find me boring. But of course, people never find you boring if they need help. So I've started to make people need help. Excuse me? Yes? Oh, could you help me? What's the matter? I'm stuck. Sorry? Uh, my hand is stuck on the door. Stuck? Yeah, I think someone's put super glue on it or something. Oh. Oh dear. I'm Lucy Tysman. Right. Could you call the fire brigade? Oh, yes. Yes. And you are? Molly Padley. Mm. Molly Padley. Yeah. Hello. Hi. 
I found bikes are quite easy to bring down at night with a wire. They don't know what's hit them. Here's one. Tiesman, how do you do? Yeah, could, you, could you get me some help, please? Oh, oh yes, yes, you'll need that. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Do you like grapes? What? I could bring you some grapes in hospital. I've changed tactic recently. I'm observing people at their houses so I can work out a reason for paying them a visit. Mrs. Ferris. Yes. May I come in? Yes. I'm afraid it's about Paul. We've been informed he drowned this morning in his canoe. last week. I told him I'd done it deliberately to prolong the conversation. <laughs> we had an exciting chat, but I don't know if it was a good idea. <sighs> Have you caught me? Well, I've got a car. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've got a just, just get in the car. Get the Now, spread your glutes. So, what seems to be the problem? Well, I've done all these muscles under my arm, so lifting a crate awkwardly. Mm -hmm. um, it was all right till this morning, but I can't move this shoulder at all now. Right, and it's just around there, is it? Yeah. I see. Well, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this over the phone, all right? 
Just wait here while I go next door. I'll ring through and you answer the phone. Okay? Mm, all right. Right. I'll speak to you in a moment. Now, tell me again exactly where the pain is. Yeah, look, could you hang on a moment? Look, uh, can you keep your voice down? I can hear you through the door. There's no point in me doing the same with the phone if I can hear you through the door, is there? No. Just speak a little bit more quietly. Now, when did this start? I'm sorry, this isn't a very good line. Um, could you ring me back? Yeah, it's 3.02. Thanks. Hello, Barn Green Health Centre. Uh, sorry, who is this? Paul Coffey? Well, I can't see you now. I'm with a patient. Look, is this an emergency? Well, come in on Thursday morning, then. Uh, hello? Doctor. Uh, hang on a minute, I'm on the phone. Well, I just wondered if... Could you just wait through there? I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Now, hello? Ah, oh, there you are. Um, Ten o'clock on Thursday, all right? Okay, I'll see you then. And can you go through a reception next time? I'm not the secretary. All right, bye. Right, so, what's the story? Well, I've got to come back Thursday. I'll see you then. All right. Uh, Doctor, is there no uh, way... 10 o'clock? Right. Yes? Nothing. All right. Come in. Doctor. Henry Chivers. No, I've just jumped the queue. I needed to ask you about this. prescribe my daughter half a kilo of heroin. Mm. I'm sorry, I can't say a thing. It'll probably take me a day or two to recover my eyesight. So, could you pop back on Thursday? Well, can't you? Thursday morning, and we can book you a proper appointment. Right. Good. Sarah, I've just blinded myself. Could you cancel the rest of my appointments? Thanks. Um, I'll probably need someone to lead me out to my car. Hello. Yeah, it's, uh, oh. oh. 
and it's Arthur on, on, the, on the seventh floor. Oh. Well, 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 there's another one. Um, no, no, I'll put this uh, tomorrow, mate. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm talking to, to someone. Um, <laughs> It's, no, it's Arthur. Could, could you just make sure... Oh, Miss, Mrs... <laughs> oh, my fuck's sake. Mrs. Pole is gone. Uh, no, I'm on, no, I'm on, Arthur. The, on the... No, no. Uh, oh! um, could you stop stop them coming now? Um, hello? Are, are you still...? No. Oh, if you could stop... stop um, no, the, 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 I'm just going to... Oh. Um, uh, um, help me. Help. Help me! If there's, um, my head is unstuck. In if, if there's anybody on the landing, could, could, this is very dangerous by the lift. And uh, if someone could help unstuck. <laughs> After all, it's not a disease. 